Good morning and welcome to Church of the Palms. We're so glad you found your way to us today. The Church of the Palms, our mission is to love God and love neighbor, which Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Our prayer is that these two commands guide everything that we do, our worship, our life together, and our service to the community near and far. This morning's service is our sanctuary worship service. Lyrics to the hymns will be on your screen, as well as scripture texts when the message has begun. You can also access our bulletin on churchofthepalms.org right on our home page. For those who enjoy worshiping in a more contemporary fashion, there is a contemporary service held on campus. Whichever way you like to worship, we hope you can share the opportunity with friends and family who might be searching for a church home. If you'd like more information about any of the announcements mentioned in today's service, feel free to give our office a call or visit us online. Our website is also a great way to learn more about our mission to love God and love neighbor and all about our small groups, classes, and community outreach efforts, some of which you can attend online. If you'd like to financially support Church of the Palms, there are several ways you can support our mission to love God and love neighbor. One of the easiest is online giving, the options of which you will find posted later in the service. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Good morning. Happy, happy Easter. My name is Sandy Snyder, and I serve as a elder and a Stephen minister and an usher in this congregation. Welcome to Church of the Palms. Christ has risen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads in the prayer of an invocation. We greet the dawning brightness of this special day with hopes renewed. We have known grief and sorrow, loss and tears, fear and failure. Meet us here, meet us here living Christ, for we need the time of resurrection. We need your healing presence. We need your word of greeting that welcomes us into the community of faith in spite of our doubts and faithlessness. You are our great teacher. We have come to learn from you. We want to be your disciples. Amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
please stand for call to worship, found on page number three of your bulletin. This is a great and joyous festival, festival day. Come to celebrate amazing good news. Sing songs of praise, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Open your hearts and minds to the risen Christ. You are greeted by name and welcomed here. Let us worship God. gave his only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. 
And by his glorious resurrection, we were delivered from the power of death. In the joy of his resurrection, let us pray together our prayer of adoration. We thank you, O God, that Easter is not about some people, but all people. We praise you that your love and your salvation are for all creation. We rejoice that the tomb is empty and that Jesus is risen and that death is conquered and that forgiveness is the last word and that life does not end with death. We bless you that the work you began in Bethlehem is the work you completed when you walk out of that tomb. Make us, O oh God, into new creations and send us along with Mary with the good news. We have seen the Lord, for we pray it in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Here is the good news. Christ has broken the bonds of death, has risen, and is victor over the cross. Christ took away the sins of the world, and we are filled with hope for our own resurrection. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen join me as we affirm our faith using the rich words of the Heidelberg Catechism. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil he also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. We invite the children to come forward right here on the steps for the children's moment as we greet one another in the name of our risen Christ.
Easter so much, and I'm wondering, does anyone like Easter at all? Oops. Yeah, can you tell My... me something you love about Easter? The Easter Bunny made me go on a wild chase with eggs. A wild chase with eggs, that's awesome. Let's hear a few more. What do you love about Easter? That God rises. Oh, there we it is. Well done, love that so much. He got us new buckets. New buckets! <laughs> Gotta love new buckets. Chocolate. Chocolate. There are so many things to love about Easter. Okay, two more. We get prizes in eggs. Oh, we get prizes in eggs. Prizes in eggs, nice. I like chocolate bunnies. Oh, I like chocolate bunnies too. Do you know that when my kids were little, we didn't have, well, maybe they did. When I was little, we didn't get stuff in our eggs. Oh. We just had to use real eggs that we dyed. Oh. Boring, but anyway, now it's so much better. And I imagine some of you are gonna get Easter baskets today. If, raise your hand if you might get an Easter basket today. Hmm. I think Miss Carol's got an Easter egg hunt planned for you today, so you might need a basket for that. Well, I put together a basket for you, maybe different than the kind that you would get at home, because you know what I put in this basket? Eggs, good guess. I put some things in here that tell the real Easter story, and I don't know if anyone could help me out, but I'm wondering, why would I have a cross in my Easter basket? Because Jesus got crucified on one. Because Jesus was on the cross. That's exactly right. And I'm thinking... Money. 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 Oh, money. Well, <laughs> money, I, money, 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 money. I wish. <laughs> Judas got some money, but... Oh, my goodness. Three nails. That's a weird thing. I wonder why there are three nails in my egg. Do you know? Because Jesus got nailed on the cross. Ouchie, that is right. Jesus got nailed on the cross. Okay, here's something else. Oh my goodness, it is really heavy. And it was way bigger than this. But this great big stone, why would I have that in my Easter basket? Because. Oh, it's so big. It is so big. Because uh, they covered the tomb with a rock when they, when they um, put him in the tomb. When he... That's exactly right. When Jesus died on the cross, they put him in a tomb. They put a great big rock in front of it so no one was getting out and no one was getting in. So far, this story doesn't sound very happy, does it? Hang with me. It gets better. Well, let's see. Let, oh, this doesn't sound like much. Let me look. <gasps> It's empty. Three days later, the tomb was empty. Jesus was alive. Jesus was raised from the dead. And you know, that's like the biggest, best part of our Easter story is that God can bring live things <laughs> every time, people. <laughs> Look at how God brings life out of something that was once dead. Be Thank you. So listen, real quiet. Oh, listen, because Miss Carol had so many of these for you to hold upstairs. Listen to this. Oh, the nails couldn't hold Jesus to the cross. The rock couldn't keep Jesus in the tomb because you know why? Nothing is impossible with God. God brings life out of all of our dead places. God brings life to you and me. God loves us so much that he wants us to live this beautiful, abundant life. So I'm wondering if you could pray with me and if you would repeat after me. You gotta listen really well. Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Palms. If you are new here, we welcome you. What a joy it is to worship our risen Lord together. We also welcome those worshiping with us online. If you miss what just happened there, there was a live chick in that egg. And apparently Miss Carol has a bunch of them up with impact kids. So I, about, I imagine adults are allowed to pet and hold chicks as well. Uh, if that brings you joy on this beautiful Easter morning. If you are new here um, or have visited been visiting with us for a little while, I wanted to point out on the back page of your bulletin, there's a very simple form that you can fill out that would uh, subscribe you to our newsletter or just let us know that you'd like to know more about Church of the Palms and then one of the pastors would be in touch with you. And we are so glad you're here. Church of the Palms is a place where we find we are able to build community, to make lifelong, deep, enriching friendships, and to wonder together what God would have us do with our lives about how to live lives of impact and purpose. And we invite you into a conversation with us about what that might look like for you. There are a lot of materials in the narthex of the church here that you can pick up today that tell you more about us. We have a Connect magazine and our annual report, our missions brochure, etc. And our website is also an excellent, excellent resource where you can learn more about who we are, what we believe, and all of the things going Going on here. You can learn about things like our Palm Center, which is that away. And at the Palm Center, we have pickleball and table tennis and trivia. You can learn about our family ministry program, which starts from the very little ones in our nursery up through our young adults who come back and continue to wonder about their faith here with us. You can also learn about the many ways there are to serve here at Church of the Palms through our food pantry, our tutoring ministry, uh, Habitat for Humanity, etc. And so we really hope you might take a look at that. You can also visit with Heather in the courtyard after the service. She'll be there, and she knows many, many, many useful things. So I encourage you to say good morning and happy Easter to Heather. There are also in the courtyard for you today something over... 150, 200 kinds of Easter bread that Pastor Mingy has helped us put together. A beautiful assortment of um, breads from all over the world. So please come out and join us for a cup of coffee and some bread after the service. I have a couple of announcements about things coming up here at Church of the Palms, the first of which is next Sunday. We welcome Dr. James Annarelli. He's the president at Eckerd College, and uh, Dr. Annarelli will be preaching at all three services. Eckerd is the only Presbyterian college here in Florida, and we're looking forward to hearing from him. Then... Uh, the next week, our Faith in Society speaker continues. This is this wonderful series that we've put together where we're inviting people in to talk who have different points of view. Can you imagine? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so we're welcoming this uh, on April 11th, David French. And David French, he writes, he's a columnist for the Atlantic and the National Review, and he's also been awarded the Bronze Star. He's a veteran and was in Operation Iraqi Freedom. So he's here on April 11th at 6.30 p.m., and that's a free event. And it's a really enriching thing uh, to come and hear people who have different ideas than perhaps you hold or I hold. Also that week, we will begin another Gather and Grow series. That's on Sunday mornings. It's our adult education hour. It's at 1015 in the campus center, which is on the other side of the courtyard. And that's on Embracing Change and Transition, a Toolkit for Aging Faithfully. So I, I think that's a several-week-long series, Embracing Change and Transition, a Toolkit for Aging Faithfully. So if you come back to worship with us, we hope that you might join us for that conversation. We are uh, encouraging people to sign up to share their gifts on Pentecost Sunday, which is on May 19th. And you may think, I don't have any gifts, but you do. You do. And this includes all kinds of things like handiwork and photography and baking and singing and any kind of gift that God may have given you. We're inviting people to come out and share their gifts on May 19th. And you can sign up with Heather or online to be a part of that. I encourage you also to look uh, after the service more closely at your bulletin on page 17. 
there's a whole bunch of upcoming senior well-being classes, which is this ministry we have here um, for our seniors. There are balance classes, making the best use of your brain, which I could benefit from. I'm going to do that one. And also, um, a lot of things we're offering for caregivers and support for caregivers in our community. Your bulletin also includes updates about things like a race in the church book club, a men's retreat, vacation Bible school, a Bible study, and it goes on and on. And we just really invite, encourage you to, to wonder this morning, this Easter morning, how uh, you might grow into deeper relationship with us here at Church of the Palms. Thank you for being here. Let us continue our worship.
Hallelujah, indeed. Let us pray. O God of resurrection, power, and love, of endless life and new beginnings, we come this Easter morning with thanksgiving and great joy. We thank you for your goodness and steadfast love. In raising Jesus from the dead, you have overcome all evil and death itself. You have proven your love for humankind despite our most human and destructive actions. We thank you, O God, that in the resurrection you have taught us that in the end the goodness of God prevails and triumphs over forces of destruction and deceit. Great God, plant this joy we feel deep within us so that we may be your love and grace in word and deed this day and every day with all we meet, we pray. We pray for the church throughout the world that all of us spread in every land may be faithful witnesses to the resurrection. May all come to believe and have new life in Christ, we pray. We pray for the people and leaders of every nation that your boundless grace, which shows no partiality, might bring Christ's reign of peace and justice to all. We pray for all who are despised, rejected, and oppressed. May they know the lib liberating power of the gospel and rejoice and be glad in the day of the Lord. We give thanks for the promise of a new creation where all creatures may live together in safety and none shall hurt or destroy others. God of power, we ex God of power and exploration, violence and the rule of fear, we pray. Protect those who need your protection and touch this world with justice and peace, we pray. We pray for those who weep like Mary at the tomb, that their hearts of sorrow may turn to cries of joy in the presence of the risen Christ. Merciful God, heal those who are sick, comfort those who are grieving, and be with those whose journey home to you is close. Grant comfort in your presence on their journey home, we pray. As we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today, may we express how your love for us and our love for you move us toward the light of your presence. O oh God, may joy and hope and love and commitment be a part of our lives, we pray. God of strength and salvation, we pray all these things in the good news of the resurrection of our Lord and <clears throat> Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our most generous God has given us the gift of this day of resurrection and our salvation. The love and promise we have received from God is great and good. Let us respond to the gifts of resurrection and our salvation and give our whole heart to the glory and honor and praise of our God. God has been generous to us without sparing even his only son for our salvation. Let us be generous back in our gratitude to God through our Easter offering so that all the ministries and missions that we are in charge of, we get to be in charge of doing locally, nationally, and globally. There are many other ways of giving on the back of your bulletin, and let us now give to the generous God with generous hearts.
Let us pray. God of the empty tomb, your grace astounds us. Day by day, you are saving us, healing our brokenness, and calling forth our gifts. Thank you for times of resurrection. Accept these offerings as signs of our gratitude and bless our work on Jesus' behalf. May we love as Jesus loved. May we serve as Jesus served. And may the whole of our lives be an expression of gratitude for all we have received from your loving hand. Amen. may be seated. It is a very intimidating thing to follow this music. (laughs) Aren't they wonderful? Would you give them another round of applause? Yes. The good news comes to us today from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Hear the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, Why are you weeping? She said to them, they've taken away my Lord and I don't know where they've laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, 
Why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I've not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. By your grace and through your mercy, we pray, O oh God, that you will allow these words to come to point to the word just read and to the word made flesh in Jesus the Christ, where we pray this in his name. Amen. <clears throat> Some of you remember the story of the man who had come to the end of his rope and couldn't see anything good left in the world, so he walked down to the middle of the Brooklyn Bridge and climbed up onto the parapet and was about to leap into the East River when a policeman laid an arresting hand on him and drew him back. The man protested to the policeman, you don't understand how miserable my life is, how hopeless the world is. Please just let me jump. The kind-hearted officer tried to talk sense into the man and finally said, well, I have a proposition for you. You take five minutes and give your reasons for why life is not worth living. And I'll take five minutes and give my reasons for why I think life is worth living both for you and for me. And if at the end of 10 minutes, you still feel like jumping, I won't stop you. The man agreed and proceeded to take his five minutes to explain why life was not worth living. And then the officer took his five minutes to explain why life was worth living for the both of them. And at the end of the 10 minutes, the two men joined hands and jumped off the bridge. <laughs> it may not take a whole lot of convincing to get us to believe that the world is going to hell. All it takes is to turn on our computer and start clicking and some algorithm in the sky will lead us down some wormhole of bad news. All it takes is for us to get into that feedback loop of our own click, our own crowd, our own club, and pretty soon the world's going to hell. And pretty soon we're up on the bridge and no one seems to have the right argument, the convincing case, the redemptive words. We hunger, don't we, for a good word, a hopeful word, a redemptive word. Like the guy who went to the diner and the waitress came up and asked for his order. I'll take a couple of eggs and a few kind words, the man said. Waitress walked away, 10 minutes later came back, put the two eggs in front of the man. Hey, where are my few kind words, the man asked. She said, don't eat the eggs. <laughs> We hunger for a good word, a hopeful word, a redemptive word. Lord knows that's what the Jesus crowd was looking for. The world was most certainly falling apart for them. Their little band had followed the rabbi over hill and dale. They had listened to his teaching. They had seen him perform miracles and signs. They had watched him heal the sick and raise the dead. They had seen that great parade just the week before. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, they were riding high. But then it all seemed to fall apart. The crest of the wave had crashed to the shore. And now there was a betrayal and a denial and arrest and a mock trial and a conviction and a sentencing and a capital punishment and a cold stone sealed tomb. Bad news all around. They didn't have to Google it. It had come to them. And that's where Easter begins, right? It begins with the bad news. It's how John begins his Easter story, right? When it was still dark. When it was still dark. When it was hopeless. When it was still bad news. When it was still dark. Mary went to the tomb. When it was still dark, Mary went to the epicenter of the darkness, the God-forsaken place, the vortex of bad news. John doesn't tell us why she went. She just went to what seemed to be the black hole of the universe. 
And there she found what she didn't expect to find. She found things not as she expected them to be. She found a mystery. She found a stone rolled away. She found an empty tomb. She found grave clothes pressed to the side. She found a strange man. She found this man who looked like the gardener, but this gardener knows her name. She's found an empty tomb and now a man who knows her name. And then it all comes together. And then it's Rabboni, teacher. Rabboni, teacher. In the darkness, in the mystery, now Mary has a word. She's got a word. She's got a few kind words. I have seen the Lord. She's got the word that splits the night, that shines the light, the word that dispels the bad news, the word that brings hope. I have seen the Lord. Isn't it interesting that of all the people to whom Jesus would appear, it would not be Peter, it would not be John, it would not be James. The first person to whom Jesus would appear would be this woman from whom demons had been cast, this woman like all women, to whom the first century had not given voice. It's Jesus who gives her the word. She becomes the first preacher of the Christian church. I have seen the Lord. To her have been given the few kind words. These are the words that change history. These are the words that bring light to darkness. And if they can be Mary's words, they can be our words because Jesus appears to the least likely of candidates and in the most mysterious of ways. Most of us have had our God moments, right? We've had our God moments. Mary is here to say that if it can happen to me, yes, it can happen to you. Maybe you remember about the woman born 100 years or so ago, a child prodigy, attended Hunter College in New York City at the age of 14, shared a prestigious poetry prize at the age of 23 with none other than Robert Frost. For a time, reveled in her associations with the Communist Party, took pride in her adamant atheism, but then life began to fall apart. Her husband had deserted her, left her alone to care for her two young boys. They had no income. She was at wit's end. The darkness had descended. She was in the black hole. All my defenses, she wrote later, all my defenses, the walls of arrogance and cocksureness and self-love behind which I had hid from God went down momentarily and God came in. That night, she said, there was a person with me in the room directly present to my consciousness, a person so real that all my previous life was by comparison mere shadow play, and I myself was more alive than I had ever been. It was like walking, waking from sleep. I think I must have been the world's most astonished atheist, and to her have been given a word, I have seen the Lord. This woman named Joy, who later married an old Oxford Don named C.S. Lewis, you never know what you might find in the darkness. Because a lot of us have had those mysterious God moments, right? When we have seen the Lord, and they're all different, right? Christ appears in a diff thousand different ways, in bad times and in good times, in sunsets and baby births, in friendship and grief, in the loss of a job and the finding of a calling, in crippling depression, in unmerited grace, in unconditional love, in those chance meetings that don't feel like chance meetings. Christ appears in a thousand different ways. Andrea Yeager was the youngest woman's tennis player to be seated at Wimbledon. She had risen up the ranks of professional tennis long before she made it halfway through her teenage years. And with her rise came the loss of any semblance of childhood and family. Her dad was overbearing and abusive. Her friends, well, actually she had no friends. Instead, was forced into pressure and competition that would cripple the strongest of adults. Before she left her teenage years, she had grown bitter, disillusioned, injured, and in the end, burned out. But it was toward the end of the tour, between the end of her career, when she was still on tour and visiting various cities, she started visiting pediatric wards of each of those cities. And there amidst the darkness of children hurting and dying, she found her calling, and in her calling she found, she found the risen Christ, and in the risen Christ she had been given a word, so she quit tennis, took all her tennis winnings, started a foundation and camp for children with cancer, and she became an Episcopal nun. 
and has given every day of her life since leaving tennis to be with children and to give them a little joy, a little light in the midst of their dark and scary lives. I have seen the Lord. You never know what you might find in the darkness. Some of you remember the visit we received a few years ago from Kim Fook, the napalm girl, who during the darkness of the Vietnam War ran out of her napalm village and onto the front pages of American newspapers, having been burned to within an inch of her life during an American airstrike. In her journey from that darkness, she found the risen Christ and by God's grace feels compelled now to forgive her enemies she appeared before the Vietnam War Memorial and spoke to the nation a message of forgiveness and reconciliation. And later that day, she met with and forgave, forgave the American serviceman who had mistakenly called in that strike and destroyed her village. And to that despondent veteran, she said, I have seen the Lord. No more guilt for you, no more shame. All is forgiven. You never know what you'll find in the darkness. While it was still dark, John says, which is John's way of saying that this is a story about you and me because we all have our darknesses, we all have our fears, we all don't know where the world is going and we all might be overwhelmed by the bad news and we all might think there is just no good reason to believe that it's gonna get any better. But then out of the shadows walks the man the resurrected man, no longer the crucified man, the resurrected man. No longer bad news, now good news. No longer guilt and shame and despair because we have seen the Lord. We have the good word, the hopeful word, the redemptive word. You remember Tony Melendez years ago when the Pope visited the United States? He was the young man who was asked to play guitar for the Pope in one of his public masses. Well, nothing big about Bill playing guitar, except that Tony has no arms. He plays guitar with his feet. And if you ask Tony how he does it, he'll tell you it's the risen Christ who redeemed his view of what he could and could not do. Tony tells of after playing for the Pope, how the Pope spontaneously came and gave him a big bear hug and how amazing it was because just a few years before, a priest, he wanted to become a priest and they told him he couldn't because no priest has no arms. Jesus had bigger plans. Tony also tells of when his little performance was over, he was walking backstage out of the corner of his eye, he noticed a young girl who was badly deformed, her arms and legs twisted severely, sitting in a wheelchair. Tony saw her attempt to wave to him, and he walked up to her, and with a big smile and tears in her eyes, the little girl said to Tony, because of you, we have hope. Because of you, Tony. We have hope. You have the word, Tony. You have the word. Give us the word, Tony. And isn't that what the sad old world needs? The sad old world needs a word. The word made flesh, the word crucified, the word risen. It's not going to cut it if all we have to do is to wallow in the bad news. If all we have is a bad word, if all we got to say is the world's going to hell, Jesus didn't die and rise so we can say the sky's falling. Jesus didn't walk out of that tomb so we can hide in our homes. Jesus doesn't call our name so we forget his. I've seen the Lord, said that young Jewish woman, and the world changed. You know the old joke, what do you get when you cross a Jehovah's Witness with a Presbyterian? You get a guy on your doorstep who doesn't know what to say. <laughs> but Easter changes that, right? We know now what to say. I have seen the Lord. We will go, and we will go to wherever there is darkness. We will go to wherever there is bad news. We will go to wherever there is doubt and guilt and shame and despair. And we will go to our cliques and we will go to our clubs and we will go to our crowds and we will go to wherever there is injustice and poverty. And we will follow that young Jewish woman even into the black hole of a cemetery because she's got the word and so do we. The word of hope and good news, the word of life and new beginnings, the word that changes history, your history, my history, the world's history. Because of you and you and you, the world has hope because we, because we, because we have seen the Lord.
benediction, we invite you to remain standing and listening to, or maybe singing a little bit along, with the Hallelujah Chorus. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.